Hello and welcome back to the channel. I've had my Apple Watch Ultra since launch day and it's been on my wrist since then literally every single day since the 16th of September 2022 I think it was. It's been an amazing piece of tech but it's not without its issues or some missing features. So in this video I'm going to talk through the things that Apple needs to either fix, change or add to get me to upgrade to the Apple Watch Ultra 2 or whatever they decide to call it when it comes out probably later this year. I've saved the biggest and most impactful uh, changes until the end, so stay tuned till the end to make sure you see what those are. And if you are enjoying the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and also hit that notification bell so that you're notified whenever I drop a new video. Thanks. So what does Apple need to change or fix? The first one is pairing with my AirPods Pro 2. I don't know if this is a problem for everyone, but it seems to plague me all the time. Whenever I go out for a run, music is supposed to autoplay when I start a workout and I've got my AirPods Pro 2s in my ear. It never works. So there's obviously an option in the iPhone Watch app to select a workout playlist when, which auto starts whenever you start a workout. So I go for a run, I put my AirPods Pro 2 in, I start the workout and silence. Nothing happens. I then have to, while running, go into the music app, select the playlist I want, press play, get it to connect to my AirPods Pro 2s, and it's just a bit of an annoyance. Yes, first world problems, but this should all work really seamlessly. Now, I have a feeling this is something to do with the AirPods Pro 2 connecting to my iPhone and not connecting to the watch straight away, but I would have expected that kind of handoff between the phone and the watch to be very seamless and work much better than it does. Just as a side note, AirPods Pro 2 review coming up next week, uh, so do make sure you uh, subscribe to see that next week. The second thing I think that needs to be fixed, and I talked about this in my previous video on the Apple Watch Ultra, on the Apple Watch Ultra, uh, I'll have that linked up either here or here in the in the video. Basically, basically it's the touch rejection technology or whatever you want to call it. Basically, there are far too many accidental presses on the Apple Watch Ultra. When I'm going about my day, I'll look down at the watch and suddenly there'll be a timer, there'll be a random calendar event up on the screen, or the weather will be showing, or the activity will be showing, because those are the complications that I have on my, on my, on my home screen. And for no reason, because my palm has brushed the watch, those will be up. I think Apple needs to work harder on making sure that these kind of accidental presses are rejected better. I know the Apple Watch Ultra 2 has a much more sensitive display because it's meant to be used with gloves, but I think they still need to figure this out because it's kind of a it's kind of annoying actually looking down to see the time and having to quit having to mess around with pressing buttons to get out of the get out of whatever screen that it's gone into to get back to the home screen. Number 3 is basically how the watch works with external heartbreak straps. When I'm working out, especially when I'm doing um, a weights workout in here, or even when I'm running actually, I prefer to wear a heart rate strap because I feel like I get much more accurate readings. Now, number one, the watch doesn't seem to auto connect as far as I can tell. There's nothing that tells me that it's auto connected to the strap whenever the strap is being worn. You have to go in through the Bluetooth settings and select that you want to use the, the in my case, the Garmin HRM Pro, and then go, go off into the workout and do your workout and hope that the heart rate is being recorded by the chest strap. There's nothing that I've noticed that indicates that the chest strap is being used and there's nothing again in the fitness app later on that shows, that tells you that the heart rate that was recorded was done via the heart rate strap rather than the watch. So in reality, you've got no idea where the heart rate has come from, whether it's come from wrist or chest strap. So it'd be really good if Apple tidied that up and had a kind of little notification or a little notice signifier, like a, you know, like a little chest trap symbol or something like that, just to show that the heart rate has come from an external source and not from the watch itself. Number four, again, something I talked about previously is adding workouts from the iPhone app rather than having to do that on the fiddly touch screen of the watch. It's, the screen is the screen's quite big on the Apple Watch Ultra, right? But when you're trying to do a multi-step Inter interval training or multi-step interval runs on the watch, it can get quite fiddly and it would be really easy to be able to go into the workout section of the watch app on your phone, uh, create the workout that you want there, save it there and have it sync back to the phone. That's how it works with Garmin's, that's how it works probably with most other uh, fitness wearables that I can think of, but for some reason Apple just hasn't implemented that and I think it's quite a, quite a bigger mission actually because it limits you know, how detailed you're going to, to sit down and do your actual workout on, on the watch. 
I end up not doing it sometimes and just mentally making a note of when I need to change to, you know, running or uh, running faster or running slower or taking a bit about of rest. So it would be much, much more helpful if we could do that on the watch. Apple, please. And get a small interjection again. If you are enjoying this video, please consider subscribing. Number five, I think Apple needs to have a smaller version of the Apple Watch Ultra, something like 46 millimeters. The regular Apple Watch has two sizes, I think it's 42 and 45, and I think it would be good to have uh, a slightly smaller version for those with slightly skinnier wrists. I know I actually might, you know, I get away with using the 49 millimeter, but I probably would like something at a 46 millimeter. I think it would probably suit me better than what is quite a large and chunky watch. I think number six, I definitely feel like the 49 millimeter, this Apple Watch Ultra is in need of a bit of a slim down. It's not very cuff friendly. If you're wearing this with a shirt, it does tend to stick and rather than slip underneath the cuff. And you know, when you're in a slightly more formal setting or you're off at work, you don't really want the watch to be showing. And it doesn't, it's not really very aesthetically pleasing to have your shirt cuff being snagged underneath the watch. Number seven, I also think, you know, with every Apple watch, what we're gonna want is more and more battery life, right? Apple did a really good job with getting this to two, two and a bit days, which is what, if I really let it run down, I'll probably get about two and a half days out of it. But if we could get that battery life up to four days, then I think that would be really good because that's, you know, a long weekend away with a workout or two, not having to charge the watch while, while you're out. And that would be perfect because then there's one less charger to carry around when I'm out Friday to Monday. So that would be really helpful to get a little bit more battery life. I know it's going to be tough without making the watch bigger, but if we could squeeze a bit more optimization out of it, that would be fantastic. So now these are the, the three I left to the end, which I think are the most impactful from a fitness and workout perspective. The next one is a really big feature and that's mapping. When I'm out on the run, I would really like to be able to have chosen, chosen a run, a trail or a run and got it mapped out from a workout that I created on the phone. And then the map is synced over to the watch for me to use as I'm running around basically. At the moment, there's no feature for that whatsoever. There's no mapping available in any runs or hikes or trails or anything like that. I know you can use a third party app called Work Outdoors, which is really, really good. But actually the mapping is all there. You know, we've got Apple Maps. I'm sure there's a way that they could implement this. All the Garmin watches have it. I'm pretty sure Coros and all the others have it. I haven't used them, but I'm pretty sure you get mapping with those of some, some description. It would be really, really helpful to be able to have a map, have it turn by turn, navigate you around, and then get to your destination without having to basically occasionally what i've had to do is have my phone with me and check the route on my phone going out for an 18k run as i'm you know as i was doing half marathon training i can't memorize that whole route by myself especially on bits where there are a few turns here and there 18 quays 18 quays 18 quay 18k is quite a long route so i had to pull my phone out check where i'm going while i'm running it's not really the best best way to do things I know, like I said, could have used Work Outdoors, but that app takes quite a lot of setup and really and truly speaking, I didn't really have the time nor want to do it. And if Apple had this as a built-in feature, it would be really good. The next is a rest and recovery advisor. Again, something I've mentioned before, but the Apple Watch is collecting a lot of information, right? Um, Garmin has body battery, Fitbit has their daily readiness score. You know, the Oura ring that I wear, you know, that's its main thing is rest and recovery. So Apple's collecting a lot of data and it's not giving you any advice built in on how you're doing from a rest and recovery perspective. And I think that's a big omission. Yes, I know there's the Athletic app, but the Athletic app is quite complex, quite convoluted. Every time I've used it, you know, there's a lot of information there. And actually it's a bit of an information overload. I think Apple could do this in a really simple and concise way, give you a readiness score, similarly similar to what you get with others, body battery, uh, Fitbit, Aura, just a simple number which tells you how rested and recovered am I? It's, and it would be very useful to make sure that people aren't really you know, overtraining because that dovetails quite nicely into number 10, which is using that rest and recovery advisor to advise you on how intense an activity you should be doing on any given day. Closing your exercise rings can be very addictive. But also if you've been doing some hard exercise and you continue to keep doing hard exercise every single day, what you're gonna run into is an injury or illness or some kind of problem. I've had this happen to me before where I've not really paid attention to when I had a Garmin, it was telling me that I needed to recover. I went out, did a punishing interval run, came back and literally I got a cold. I fell ill and I was 
away from running for three, four days. Whereas actually, if I'd rested for that one day and then gone out on the hard workout the next day, I wouldn't have had that illness. So in reality, this is a, quite a big omission. And, you know, closing your rings can become very, very, very addictive, especially if you're on a long streak. But if you're on the borderline of being overtrained, if your watch notified you to say, go and take a half an hour walk today rather than that, rather than, you know, in your mind, you had to be doing an interval run today, which would be quite hard. Go and have a walk instead today, because actually you're, going to, you're, you're at risk of becoming overtrained. That would be very useful and might help people prevent injuries and might mean that the Apple Watch Ultra can be taken a bit more seriously by more serious athletes rather than, you know, at the moment, a serious athlete is going straight for a Garmin, right? They're not coming to the Apple Watch Ultra. For us normal people, Apple Watch Ultra is fine. But again, we could all do with a bit of help with deciding how hard to exercise or how hard to work out on any given day. And I think that's another big omission. So that's my list of 10 things. What would you like to see Apple include on the Apple Watch Ultra 2? L leave a note in the comment. Let me know what you think.